Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of, yet again, what seems to be one of the oldest stars in the galaxy. A star created really, really early in the existence of the universe, when the universe was only about 100 to maybe 200 million years old. And the star whose actual picture you see right here. Now it doesn't really have a cool name yet, and probably never will. But in total we've only discovered approximately 34 such stars. Which means that this is a pretty rare discovery. But let's talk a little bit more about this because there is actually quite a lot to discuss. And I wanted to start right here. This is what's known as the Methuselah star. This star made the headlines, I guess about a decade ago or so, when it was originally discovered to be roughly around 14.2 billion years old. And since the universe itself is about 13.8 billion years old, this obviously created a bit of a problem. How can a star be older than the universe? Now, obviously it's not. As a matter of fact, it's very likely a lot younger than that. This star, known as HD 142A3, is very likely about 13.6 to maybe 13.5 billion years old. And that's mostly because the observations and the calculations here did have a very, very inaccurate prediction. The actual uncertainty and calculations was about 800 million years. Which is of course why this star totally makes sense, it's just the calculations are not really precise. You can actually find this paper in the description below. But this is still interesting because this star is also the closest such object to us. And it's a star that's been known to us for hundreds and hundreds of years. Mostly because it does seem to move across the night skies a little bit faster than some of the other stars. And it's also sort of moving toward us as well. But this star we've talked about before. And also, generally speaking, there isn't really that much that we know about it. It's an interesting object, but it's definitely not the most interesting. Mostly because some other stars have been discovered since. Now, the Methuselah star is known as the metal poor star. That's essentially when a star is mostly composed out of hydrogen and helium and does not have a lot of metals. In astronomy, metals just means anything that is not hydrogen, not helium. So, pretty much everything that's on a table of elements below hydrogen and below helium. So, all of these elements would be considered to be metals in the field of astronomy. Now, if a star doesn't have a lot of these elements, and if it's mostly made out of hydrogen and helium, we usually refer to these as metal poor stars. And normally this also suggests that the star is much much older than some of the other objects. And the reasoning behind this is pretty simple. Normally, as the star ages, it acquires a lot of elements from a lot of different supernova and a lot of various powerful explosions that end up bringing a lot of materials to those stars and enriching them in metals, enriching them in those elements. And so younger stars, like our Sun, will normally contain a lot of carbon, they will normally contain a lot of lithium, and generally a lot of other elements that are not hydrogen and not helium. But the vast majority of the elements are still going to be hydrogen and helium. And the more of these metals it has on the inside, the more likely the star is much younger. But the thing is, over the past few years, the scientists have also started discovering what's known as the UMP, or Ultra Metal Poor Stars. Stars that have so few metals in them, that theoretically they're even older than this right here. And the oldest such object was only discovered a few years ago, and it's basically right here. It doesn't have a proper name yet, and it mostly has this name that you see right here. But it seems to be the poorest of them all, the poorest in metals star. And because of this, its age has been very accurately determined to be roughly around 13.6 billion years old. With most of the studies about this star suggesting that it was probably produced by just one single supernova of what's known as Population 3 stars. Now this is where the mystery sort of begins. Today the scientists have been trying to discover these mysterious Population 3 stars by trying to find these UMPs, these ultra metal poor stars. The majority, if not all of these UMPs, were probably produced by a single supernova of the oldest or the most ancient stars in the universe. And today the scientists simply refer to these as Population 3 or POP3 stars. And all of these were believed to be extremely massive, extremely bright and very powerful stars that very likely only survived for a few million years, exploded, creating a tremendous amount of early elements and a lot of early gas that then started to coalesce and created Population 2 stars, or basically the second generation of stars. Now Population 2 stars are pretty well known today, there's quite a lot of them around, and many of them seem to be even relatively close to us. For example, the previously mentioned Methuselah star is one such star. But today scientists believe that some Population 3 stars might have been a little bit smaller in mass and might have even been small enough to survive for billions and billions of years and even still be there today. In other words, they might have never gone supernova. 
and so trying to find these mysterious stars have been a goal for many different scientists. And one of the ways they've been doing this is by trying to locate these UMPs, ultra-metal poor stars, and then trying to find out if anything near them could be even older. And surprisingly, this star right here that was recently discovered seems to contain so little carbon on the inside that the only explanation is that the star, whose name you see right here, was most likely created by a single population 3 star that was about 30 masses of the sun that went supernova and created a lot of gas about 100 million years after the creation of the universe. And from this gas, as it coalesced, it created this particular star, which basically makes it literally a second generation star. Something that the scientists have been looking for for a really long time, and something that they believe will help them identify if any older stars exist in the universe. Or in other words, just like some of the previous UMPs, this one was also created by a single supernova from a single star. It was not really mixed with any of the other materials like normally when a lot of other stars are created. Usually this material comes from several supernova from several stars. And so by using the analysis from this star, the scientists can now start to figure out, first of all, what sort of emissions to maybe look for in order to identify even older stars, but also trying to discover what sort of a star created this object. And so by trying to identify what this star probably came from, they can then start identifying various parameters that can help scientists identify exactly where those population 3 stars could be located. Which would definitely help the scientists explain a lot of questions about the early universe and of course about the creation of various stars and the evolution of various stars around the galaxy. And all of this will of course help us answer how our planet and how our solar system was created as well. Now today the assumption is that Earth and of course the Sun, being the population 1 star, was very likely created many many generations after. The assumption right now is that at least a dozen and possibly up to a hundred different supernova happening over a period of approximately 7 to 8 billion years were responsible for delivering all of the material to the solar system and essentially creating all of us as well. And so even though it's true that we're all stardust, we're not just stardust, we're actually a multi-generation stardust, coming from various supernova, from various locations, from various periods of time. The hydrogen in us is of course from the beginning of the universe, but a lot of other elements, such as for example iron, could have come from some of the nearby supernova that might have happened only approximately 5 billion years ago. Now that's of course something that we would like to learn more about, but that's not something we can definitely know for sure right now. And so hopefully because of papers like this one that actually employed a new way of using photometry to discover these stars, we might be able to discover a lot more of these UMPs, these ancient objects, and then maybe hopefully finally discover the first ever population 3 star, the most ancient object in the universe. But apart from that, well, I guess we know a few more details about the star. So first of all, it's about 16,000 light years away from us, so it is pretty far away, but it's already in its red giant stage, meaning that at some point it's going to sort of throw away all of the material from the outside and most likely just become a white dwarf. It's not massive enough to go supernova, so in that sense, a lot of the material here may just end up producing what's known as a planetary nebula. So basically something really beautiful like this. But eventually it will end up being a white dwarf with some of the gas that it ends up throwing out, recirculating and creating new stars in the future. The scientists in this paper also suggested that it should technically contain more silicon, so the lack of silicon in the star is also a bit of a mystery. Which of course implies that a lot of follow-ups and a lot of other discoveries are needed to really try to explain what's happening with these stars, and more importantly, if we can use the data from these stars to try to trace back their origin and find, in some sense, their parents find those ancient stars that we're looking for. But for now, unfortunately, that's kind of all we know. So now there are 34 UMPs found as of today, and every single one of them is really mysterious and basically are the oldest objects in our galaxy. But at some point in the next few years, I'm sure we'll find something that's even more mysterious and something that's possibly even older. Until then though, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the paper and all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, bye bye.